time to start with the first big tool that is essential for ethical hackers. That tool is called Nmap. We're going to cover a lot of things inside of it and unlike all the other tools that we covered by now, which you might or might not use in penetration tests, this is a tool that you will almost always use without any doubt. So what is Nmap? Nmap is a network mapper. It is a free and open source network scanner and it is used to discover hosts and services on a computer network by sending packets and analyzing responses. It has a lot of different options and we're going to check them out in the next few videos. For now, let us just see how we can start Nmap and run a basic scan. First thing, make sure your Metasploitable is up and running and also if you got any other devices in your home network, turn them on just so we can scan them as well. Ok, let us see how we can run Nmap and what options do we get with Nmap. Just like all the other tools, we can get the Nmap help menu by only specifying Nmap in terminal or specifying Nmap dash dash help. And you will see right away we get a lot of options right here. And this right here is just a short help menu. We will see the longer menu once we start experimenting with these options right here. But for now, we're only interested in running Nmap with just a basic scan. So for basic scan, all we need to do is specify an IP address. If we go to the help menu and you scroll all the way to the top, we should see target specification right here. It tells us that we can provide a host name, an IP address, or a network for scanning. And below that we got some of the examples of what we can specify with Nmap and what is the syntax for specifying hosts. We can also read our targets from a list by specifying option dash IL. And if we want we can exclude some hosts that we don't want to scan by specifying dash dash exclude option. For the first time, let us get an IP address from our Metasplitable and let's scan it to see what results we get for scanning one IP address. We already saw how we can get Metasploitable IP address. You can either run NetDiscover to see all the online hosts or if you don't want to bother you can just go to Metasploitable right here and type ifconfig. I can see that the IP address of my Metasploitable is 192.168.1.6 so that is the IP address that I will use. Let's run our first Nmap scan. If I type Nmap and just 192.168.1.6 and press enter. Wow, this finished pretty fast. But don't get used to it, the only reason that this scan finished so fast is because the target is on my home network. True Nmap scans can sometimes take hours to finish. Depending on where your target is, how many ports they have open, are they protected by firewall, and many other things that we are also going to cover, but for now, this is the response for our Metasploitable with our basic scan. So it tells us that host is up. It tells us which open ports it has. We get the exact number of which ports are open on the target machine. And right here, we can notice that there are a lot of ports that are open. That is because Metasploitable is running a lot of services. Nmap also tells you besides the port that is opened, which service is running on that open port. And this is this third column. So we can see that port 21 is open and it is running FTP, which we already know that it's file transfer protocol. We got port 22 to be open and that port is for secure shell. We got port 80 that is opened and that is an HTTP port and this could mean that our Metasploitable could be hosting a web page. We can check this out if we type the IP address of our Metasploitable inside of our Firefox. So let's go up here, open up our Firefox. And if I go up here and type 192.168.1.6, press enter, this will automatically go and try to connect to the port 80 and indeed it is hosting a web page. But more about this web page later on in the course, as it holds bunch of vulnerabilities which we will cover. For now, let us just see what other things we got with our Nmap. So besides these known ports that we got right here, we also discovered 
bunch of other ports hosting different services and some of them could be vulnerable. We also see this right here that says not shown 977 closed ports. But wait a second, I said that there are over 65,000 ports. Why does it say that it didn't show only 977 ports? Or it shows that only 977 ports are closed. That is because Nmap by default scans most known 1000 ports. It doesn't scan all 65,000. We can tell it to scan all 65,000, which we will see later on, but in most cases it is not necessary. Ok, cool. Our first Nmap scan gave us some results. And all of these results from our scans you would write down in a report in a real penetration test. Now that we know how we can scan one IP address, let us see how we can scan a range of IP addresses. Let's say we want to scan our entire network and for this once again you must know your subnet of your network or your network's IP range. We talked about this earlier, for me it is from 192.168.1.1 up to 192.168.1.255. So we can specify this in two different ways. We can type nmap 192.168.1.1-255 or we can type it like this 192.168.1.1-24. And if you are new to subnetting, you can think of this slash 24 as something that says first 3 octets are not changeable. And by first 3 octets I mean first 3 numbers, which leaves us with only last octet or last number that will be changeable inside of our IP range. So let's scan it, if I press enter. Now this scan right here might take a little bit more time, since it is not only scanning one host, it is scanning multiple hosts. And even though it's scanning multiple hosts, it finished relatively fast because it is scanning my own network. Let us read the results. So these right here are the results for the Metasploitable, as we can see by the IP address. And we got the same results as before, which ports are open and what services are they running. Down here we get that it scanned 256 IP addresses and 3 hosts are up. Let's see what other two hosts are up besides our Metasploitable. We got a device with the IP address of 192.168.1.4 and it says right here all 1000 scan ports on this device are closed. And you remember when I told you that this is the more secure version since right now we cannot connect to any one of these ports. And this is probably some home device, possibly my laptop. It has all 1000 scan ports closed because it doesn't host any service to other machines. And the last device that we got is my router. We got its IP address and we also got which ports it has open. So it has port 22 for SSH, port 23 for Telnet, port 53 for the domain, port 80 and port 443 for HTTP and HTTPS and this port right here that says service unknown. This is because Nmap couldn't figure out what service is running on this open port. Ok, great. For now we performed basic Nmap scan without adding any additional options to it. And with this we managed to discover open ports on our target machines. That is good for the start. In the next video we will see what else can we discover using Nmap and what other cool options it has. This time we discuss different scan types that we can do with Nmap. Now, Nmap is a huge tool and it offers many different types of scans that we can perform and we will be covering just some since there are a lot of them. However, at the end of this video I will give you a really good tip as to how you can really master the Nmap tool. Talking about different scans doesn't necessarily mean that we will get different results. Matter of fact, many of these different scans will give us the same result. And in this video I am going to explain exactly what the differences are between certain scans. To fully understand this, you will need a background knowledge on TCP and UDP. So in case you didn't watch the short video I made on TCP and UDP, make sure to watch it before covering this. Let's start with the first type of scan and that scan is called TCP SYN scan. Let me open the terminal. 
the command that we must run is nmap dash ss and then we're going to be scanning metasploitable in this video since that is the machine that we are attacking so the ip address of my metasploitable is 192.168.1.6 and this dash ss is tcp synscan synscan is probably the most popular scan in nmap it can be performed quickly scanning thousands of ports per second on networks that aren't protected by a firewall. And the reason why it is called a SYN scan is because it never really opens a full TCP connection. You only perform the first step of three-way handshake, which is sending SYN. And the way it works is, if the target sends SYNAC back for a certain port, that indicates that that port is listening or it is open. Target can also send something called RST, which stands for reset, which would indicate that the port is closed. In case it doesn't give any response back after several tries, port will be marked as filtered. And filtered is just another state of ports that happens once Nmap cannot determine whether a certain port is open or closed. The filtered state could happen if port is for example protected by some filtering or a firewall. And now that we know exactly how TCP scene scan works, Let's test it out on our Metasploitable. There is one thing with this command. If I try to run it, it will not work. It will tell me, you requested a scan type which requires root privileges. And the reason this requires root privileges is because we are only sending one part of three-way handshake and telling our machine that we do not want to respond to a CNAC bit set in case it is sent back from the target. That requires root privileges. So we must run this with sudo sudo nmap-ss and then let's type in our password and we will notice it gives us the results of ports that are open very fast and it is also very important and satisfying once we know how certain scan type works once again it sends only the sin and waits for a synac or rst and it never establishes a full tcp connection let us check out the result so we got these ports open, and we also got what service is running on those open ports. Now, here's the time that it took, and we're going to compare this with different scans. And the reason it finished this fast is, once again, it doesn't establish a connection. Compared to this SYN scan that we just performed, we also got something called TCP Connect Scan, or also labeled as dash ST. So in order to run this, we can just change this command from dash ss to dash st. And you will see all of these options if you run the help menu of nmap. What's interesting about this is that it does not require sudo privileges. And the reason it does not require is because it performs a normal TCP three-way handshake connection. So the only difference between this and previous scan is that TCP connect scan establishes a full connection. The important part here that you should remember is that this scan will leave much more trace that you performed an nmap scan on the target machine, and it is easily detected. That's why once you can run nmap as root, usually syn scan will be a better option than the tcp connect scan. Nonetheless, let's test this one out so we can remove sudo, as it does not require root privileges, and you will see it also finishes relatively fast. The output will be exactly the same as with the SYN scan, but sometimes it could take a little bit longer than the SYN scan since it is performing a full TCP connection. And even though we got the exact same result, which are just the open ports and the services that they run, now we know how both of these scans work. And now you know that, for example, this scan is much more detectable than the SYN scan. Or you can say that it just makes more noise on target machine the last scan that we're going to cover, and keep in mind these are just some of the scans and I will show you where you can find the rest of them and possibly test them out if you want to. But the next scan that I'm going to cover is pretty unpopular and that is the dash SU scan, or also known as UDP scan. The reason why it's unpopular is because many services on the internet run over TCP protocol, as we already know. Since UDP scanning is much slower than TCP scanning, and more difficult, sometimes when people are developing security for their ports, they ignore the UDP ports. And this results in a mistake, as there are a lot of exploitable UDP services, 
and we should never ignore this scan just because it takes time. Let us test it out. This also will require sudo privileges, so let us type sudo nmap-su for the UDP scan and specify the IP address of Metasploitable. You will notice this scan will take time. You can check at how much percent it is currently at by pressing the upper arrow key. So if I press upper arrow key, down here it will tell me it is currently at 3%. And I'm just going to leave this running while I show you the cool tip for the nmap. So remember this, the key to learning nmap in great details is not in reading its help menu, but in reading its manual. And to open the nmap manual, you can open your terminal and type manual nmap. And let me do this in a second terminal. So I will open it up, type man, and then nmap. This man right here is shortened for manual. Press enter. In this file, it explains every nmap option in great detail. Let us find different scan types that also exist since we didn't really cover every one of them. Let's scroll all the way down to different nmap scans. And as we're scrolling, you will see that we are passing the actual help menu that we get outputted once we run the dash dash help. And below this help menu, it explains every option in great details. And as I'm scrolling, I came to this part, which says port scanning basics. And here are the six port states recognized by nmap. And this is good to read. So we got the open port state, the closed port state. We got filtered port state unfiltered port state, open and filtered, and closed and filtered. So if you want, read through this. It is really useful knowing once you get, for example, filtered ports to know exactly what that means. And if I go a little bit more down, here they are. Here are the different scan types that nmap has. So here is the TCP skin scan that we performed, which is dash SS. Here is the dash SD, which is full TCP connection scan. And down here, you will notice after the UDP scan that we got different options as to how we can perform our scan. And you can read about each and every one of them and see when are they useful and how you can specify them. Here is the TCP X scan. Here's the TCP window scan. And you will see there are a lot of them. There are also different options such as these scan flags which is custom TCP scan, but this is an advanced option and we might take a look at this later on. Here is idle scan, echo scan, let's see all the way down, IP protocol scan, FTP relay host, FTP bound scan, and that would pretty much be it for the nmap scans. So depending on your target and what you exactly want to get from this scan, you would pick one of them. So for example, if you wanted to discover open ports, you would use the TCP scene scan. Now the X scan, I believe, which is the dash SA, which we saw a few seconds ago, is useful, I believe, to mapping out the firewall. Just read through them if you have time and you will discover how they work and when are they useful. So let's see how much percentage our UDP scan is at. So it has finished about third of the scan and we know that this will take at least 10 to 15 more minutes, so we're not going to wait this. And by the way, about the nmap manual, you don't need to read that entire file, just it is good to know that it exists. So sometimes when you forget something or you want to check out if nmap has some other option that you need, you can just open that manual and read until you find what you need. Nobody expects you to know everything inside of that file, but after some time, you will start picking some of the commands up and memorizing them. Cool. We covered a lot in this video. The next two videos will be even more important. We're going to check how we can discover operating systems that our target machines run and what versions of services are they running on an open port. Which is, remember, one of the most important things that we want to find.